Hello. Hello. Interesting video for you this week. Uh, into the eye of the storm, and I'll say no more. Got some wind out there, eh? Uh, Forty-five knots. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. It's probably not very clear. We take on a couple of passengers affected by the storm and we complete the first leg of this season's sailing from Mersin to Kekover. This week our journey is from Alanya where we picked up a band strap on our prop across the bay all the way to Adrasan, some 87 miles away. It's 0545. Just uh, we left the Lanya three o'clock this morning. Um, totally forgot to film anything. Um, the Lanya is behind us there. Another gorgeous sunrise. Uh, that's David in eternity. And Peter and Anne in White Cat. Uh, Honokai decided to um, cross this bay, which is about 85, 90 miles, something like that, 75, 85 um, miles last night. The weather was pretty good. Um, flat as it is now. Wind speed is 5.4. Apparent wind speed is 3.9, so we're um, running fairly close hauled motor sailing. Um, forecast is for very light winds, F3, maybe 4, which is you know pretty light. Um, swell half a meter, two foot, maybe two foot six, I don't know, less than that. Anyway, so there we are, the dash across the bay uh, of Ant Antalya Bay to the other side. We should get there at arrival at 17, 14 hours, so 61 miles to go. This is the first of a number of swallows that visited White Cat, Eternity and us. We think, um, we think they're affected by weather which is much further west. Where did he go? Oh, he's coming back. We tried biscuits and water, but the birds weren't eating, they just wanted to sleep. Hello mate, it's nice to sleep. Probably for now. So once we got into the bay, I did a little bit of research, and these appear to be European swallows. They winter in Africa, and then they fly up across Europe as far as the UK or further but of course whenever I see swallows I always think of Monty Python you know that scene from the Holy Grail oh, it does look very picturesque but that's the wind gone well there's a bit on the water over there, but it looks like it's going in a different direction. Yeah, we can put, put it away now. I wonder where Holokai are. The left hand side. Left hand side. It is very mountainous, very green as well. Uh, here we are in the quiet bay, anchors down. We've had a, a beer, 
You can see here we did actually get some really good sailing at one point. Somebody shouting at their dogs over there on the beach. But um, White Cat there and Honokai there. David's just in front of us. Very, very peaceful here. Um, until tomorrow when the beast lets loose. Yeah, until tomorrow evening. Well, until Friday. Today's Wednesday. Uh, we cannot be here Friday. It's going to be um, breaking waves on that shore over there. So uh, we need to be get gone and uh, get into Kekhover, I think. But it is a nice bay. Nice place to be. We have a beer, an arrival beer. Be nice to get the drone out, but uh, it'd be nice to get the drone out, but um, I'm not going to get time before it gets dark. Cause it's a shame because it's the golden hour now and it would look great on the drone. Uh, 10 past 7 in the morning, we're 20 minutes early living because we were going to leave at 7.30 but everybody was up and at them so we got on the radio and we're away I've cut the fishing boats out there sun's been up a little while but it's cloudy it's actually been a bit of rain this morning um, we looked at the weather forecast or the um, the satellite imagery for the weather yesterday and uh, it looks like those birds were um, the swallows have been blown off course by strong northerly winds so there you go here we are leaving it's happy face <laughs> it's too early <laughs> it's too early yeah it is so we've, we've done, we haven't done astounding mileage, but um, we've been at it every day. And, um, you know, we could have just done the 200 and something odd miles uh, overnight. Uh, two nights would have done it. Um, we'd have been okay on fuel, but, you know, it's nice to stop and relax in the evening and, and not be on a schedule. Um, after all, we are retired. We're not um, we're not young guns, and uh, we like to see a bit of the places we travel. Take our time. Right, let's uh, let's get out to see. Get going. Oh, what a difference! Uh, <laughs> an hour mate, it's not a day. Um, we came out of the bay and it was flat calm. I thought, oh, I'm going to have to motor all the way. Um, and then the wind got up and the wind is now showing 25. 25, but we've been up to 27, 28. Um, two little fishing boats alongside us. Out there that are struggling. I think once we get round the headland here, the, the wind will abate a little bit. Well, it, we'll, we'll get protection from the peninsula and the islands anyway, so the sea state will flatten out. I've got a feeling that the... Uh, it's more localised. Yeah, I think it's localised. So, that's where we're going. You can see that. In between those islands there, look. Oh yeah, and we're doing 5.9 now, the wind's come down a bit to 6.1, 6.2. Wind's come down a bit now, 21, 22 it's showing. There. Yeah, surfing a little bit, 6.45. Yeah, right, let's uh, get on with a bit of navigation. Oh, as you said, get round the headland. And it's flat calm, but we're not quite round the headland yet. Um, we're just going between the islands there. It's uh, the depth comes up from over 100 metres, look to 
10 metres around here. And we're at 25 at the moment. That's the headland. There's the sea behind us. Quite, um, quite rough. I would guess these are a metre and a half swell here. Yeah, probably a little bit more. Really difficult to see. But um, the little fishing boat surfing. If you look at the, the fishing boat, look. He's surfing forward now. There we go. So that's his, and he's almost buried again in the surf. And he's in, in less surf than we are, so he's a good meter and a half there. Now you look out here, the other side of the headland, and it's as smooth as a baby's um, thingy, you know. Posterior. Posterior, that's the word, yeah. Um, and Finnecay's over there, so we're, um, we're going to go head that way in a moment, put some sail up, reduce the engine speed a little bit and uh, go into Finnecay and fill up with fuel. There we go. We're about half a mile off of uh, Finnecay now. You'll remember this, uh, remember this uh, port from our previous videos. Um, it is a really nice town, they're great people, um, love the marina, they, you know, they've got real liverboard community facilities, but uh, we've been told they want 60 euros a night for us here at 11.3 uh, metres, 37 feet, 60 euros, so, um, that, well, that's about 60 bucks a night. Um, which is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, lovely place, fantastic market here on a Saturday. It's a shame because we would stay here again another year, um, another winter, but uh, you know, we've just been priced out of the market. 4,800 euros they're wanting now for, for us to stay the winter, which is just ridiculous, you know, absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, enough of that. We're going to go in and get some fuel. Uh, there is a little shop on near the fuel dock, so we're going to um, see if we can get some fresh bread and some milk. We're just inside Finnecay now. We've just fueled up. David's at the fuel dock. We're just going over to see our friends from Elizabeth. Say hello. We've seen Dean and Linda. So we're about an hour out of Finnecay, we're just going past Demray, where the uh, ancient uh, city is, and the uh, tombs in the hills, and in front of us just here, it's the unfinished marina, and over there, it's a nice school coming Yeah, through. that's, uh, I'd say that's a storm that's bigger than the squall isn't it it's huge I think the bad weather is starting early um, we haven't got any sails up and the uh, the swell is getting bigger and bigger it's about a meter at the moment with a fairly short period on it
Our Garmin chart plotter actually records wind speed and direction. You can see here, 49 knots is what hit us, and look how quickly it came in. David was behind us, and he had 55 knots. He was travelling with his dinghy on his deck, and the high windage meant he had to turn round and run with the wind. You okay? <laughs> oh, that was exciting. <laughs> that was pretty rough. Um, I, I don't think I haven't been in anything so rough for probably six years. We had, I think it was 47 or 49 knots of wind sustained, just under 50 knots. Um, we had sea state, which I can only describe as rough. Uh, somewhere between four and five metre swell but with very very short steep uh, faces to it breaking and of course all the spume coming over the front of the boat and yesterday we took the, the passerelle out the locker and because um, we were working on the water maker and we've damaged that wheel, look. Yeah. Um, so we had that stuff, and it came very quickly. I've never seen anything come quite as quick. So we saw sort of rain, but yeah, I mean, we were 2,700 RPM and only just able to hold our position and a direction. We were very close to me turning the boat round <coughs> um, and just running under bare poles and a little bit of engine. Um, but then slowly, slowly, slowly it started to abate and uh, now we're in five knots of wind. Really? Uh, yeah, five <laughs> knots of wind. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 32 degrees so we can sail it, we've got um, less than half an hour to go, we've actually come in land a little bit behind the uh, peninsula um, to give us a bit of protection, there's not so much fetch. But it's, it's quite a while since I've been in sea where I've felt that I need to put a life jacket on. Um, the one thing I will say is for all you Bavaria knockers out there, this boat handles extremely well in bad weather. She's sharp at the front. Yes, she's got a wide arse, Steve. Um, but in bad weather, she holds, holds her own. And um, I was still able to point the boat where I wanted to go, albeit under a you know a boost of power. Um, but we went from doing six knots at 2000 RPM to doing one, maybe less than one, at 2800 RPM. So clearly that we hadn't got a lot in reserve. And when you haven't got a lot in reserve like that, to keep the boat pushing forward, keep the boat moving, that's when you that's when it gets uncomfortable. Um, but this this boat does handle extremely well. And and it's it's never the boat, you know, it's never the boat, it's it's um it's always the nut behind the wheel. And um I did get wet and um I, I actually took my I took my boots off because um, it was easier for me to uh, to work in bare feet on the teak than it was those boots because they're my old Dubris are ten years old and uh, very slippy. Right, nearly there, madam. Is the kettle on? <laughs> and so we are now. Coming into Smuggler's Cove, big cave there, I'll zoom in, we're going to come around and have a look at that.
Um, I can't, I can see one gullet. I can't see anybody on AIS, so hopefully uh, I can see a second gullet. But they usually go in and tie back. Seven knots of wind. You wouldn't believe we've just been through a really bad squall. So that's the worst I've been in for quite a while. Oh look. Chai to the rescue. Chai to the rescue. A nice cup of chai. Right, I'm going to put this down. I need to navigate and drink me tea. The casualty of the storm was our Turkish flag. Good job we've got a spare. Yeah, but at least the decks are nice and clean now. There's no sand on them. <laughs> True. We have got another entrance, so another room. Um, yeah, I'll go and find it. We to get out. There we are. That's this year's first trip done. 300 plus miles from Mersin down to Kekover. Right, well, I hope, hope you like that, that video. It was an interesting passage and uh, not the one that we thought we were going to make. Um, just random storm, wasn't it? it you know, um, no, no worse than a summer's day in the UK, to be honest. <laughs> but it's been a while since we've, um, we've sailed in, in bad weather. Um, uh, I think the last time was when we were crossing Lime Bay. Uh, the, um, that was a long while ago. <laughs> the, uh, well, it must be six, six, years. six seven years yeah. ago. Crossing Lime Bay, came in through the needles, wind over tide, and um, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> if you know the area, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, yeah, it it was um, it was an interesting passage, passage, as they say. Um, we actually got into Kekova, stayed here a couple of days and then we went back to Finike so that I could go and see the dentist and we managed to get into the uh, market on the Saturday morning as well and into the Red Lion on Friday night, didn't we? See all our friends who are now leaving Finike. <laughs> We'd like to welcome on board our latest Patreons and they are Chris and Melissa and Mr Finn. Ah yeah, Mr Finn. As you, you know Mr Finn, we looked after him. Uh, over the winter and uh, it was great fun doing so he's a real character and thank you to all the rest of our patrons yes and of course our subscribers Yeah. not forgetting you we had a couple of people buy us a beer and we have actually bought some beer we have at Finnecay Market we bought some beer and um, some fruit and veg as well and we also had um, some subscribers pop over the other morning with a lovely bottle of wine for us so thank you SV Cordelia yeah, thank you very much. That was that was very nice of you. Yeah. Oh, well, next week. Um, what are we doing next week? Have to wait and see. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Next week. So don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see next week. It's that little bell and button that you hit down there, and um, we'll see you next week. Until then, sell safe. Sell safe. Bye. Bye.